obviously coming off two tough losses, our focus this week has been getting back on the right track. Um, guys came in motivated this week. Uh, it was good practice yesterday. We had one good practice earlier in the week and then kind of got on a normal Wednesday schedule yesterday. I'm um, excited about the opportunity and we'll, we'll see what the next uh, few days holds. Thank you very much, Coach. We'll head into questions. And the first one will be from Mary Kay Cap. Uh, yeah, Mike, can you talk about, you know, having Chase back? How confident do you feel heading into the game with Chase and how challenging was it? If you can reflect for us a little bit on uh, the events of last week and, you know, missing the first extra point and, and those sorts of things. Yeah, you know, it's it's hard for any position group when you lose a guy, you lose your starter the day before the game. You know, so Chase felt real sick, I guess, Thursday night last week and came in Friday, tested positive, and then we lost him for the game. Um, you know, we felt confident in, in Chris. He just didn't have a ton of reps, obviously, with the first team because we're always trying to get our starter the reps there. We only have limited reps every week, but that's no excuse. We got to make that extra point. It was a nice night. Um, he had missed one exactly in the same spot earlier in pregame. We thought we had it corrected. Um, he ended up correcting on the next field goal, but he can't miss a PAT. That When you bring up an emergency kicker, the expectation is at least make PAT, especially on a nice night. Okay. Thanks, Mary Kay. Next, we'll go to Dale Ryder. Yeah, Mike, along those lines, is it fair to say that Chase is your guy this week, and uh, how do you feel about him kind of getting things back on track? I think he's missed five of his last nine field goal tries, so how do you get him uh, on track with these uh, two critical games ahead of you. Yeah, you know, he came back yesterday. Obviously, he came off the list um, yesterday in practice. Yesterday, he hit the ball really well. We'll have another field goal session tomorrow. Uh, hit the kickoffs well, because that's what you worry about when you come off of a, an illness like that, any illness. So you worry about the leg strength and the stamina and all that stuff. Um, but he hit the kickoffs very well yesterday. We had a, si a side field goal uh, session that he hit the ball really well. So I'm very confident in Chase. And then uh, you guys added Blewett this week to the practice squad. Do you have any previous history uh, with him or uh, any uh, background there? Chris came in in March and worked out for us and did a real nice job. So he's always been on our emergency list. I know he kicked for Washington earlier this year. Um, we felt like he was the best option, emergency option here uh, going forward. Thanks. Thank you, Daryl. Let's go to Scott Patrick. Hey, Mike, what goes into that decision to um, make the switch at the backup kicker, given, you know, Chris only had the one shot? Yeah, I mean, like I said, he's got to make that PAT. I think if he makes a PAT, makes a field goal, hits the other PAT, you know, he's probably still here. I'm sure we'd still go with Chase because he's our starter. Uh, but at the end of the day, you, your expectation is always to, to make a PAT on a, on a nice night, regardless of how much experience you've had. It's a 33-yard field goal. The snap was perfect. The hole was perfect. Protection was excellent. He's got to make that kick. Um, I just think at the end of the day, you're always trying to upgrade your roster, uh, no matter what the position is. And we felt like uh, Chris Blewett was the best option going forward as an emergency kicker. Thanks. Thank you, Scott. Our next question will be from Scott Pasco. Hey, Mike. Uh, so the last few years, the league's averaged about seven or eight punt return touchdowns per year. And I think it was over 10, like the decade prior to that. But there's only been two this year. What's, do you have thoughts on that drop off? Well, I think we've talked about this before. It's the, the, the punters in this league are making it more difficult. Um, there's a lot of punters who are, have the ability to, if you have a vice on one side, they kick to the single press gunner side. Uh, if there's seven in the box and that obviously helps the gunner to that side cover, um, you know, the hit and roll punts that a lot of these punters are pretty good at. You know, we've had a few this year where you get a, you know, 38 yarder in the air with less than, uh, perfect hang time and the ball hits and rolls 15 yards. We had those against us and we've had those for us. I think there's a war of those this year. If you look around the league um, and, you know, quite frankly, the, uh, you know, the punters are better. I mean, they, when they do hit a good ball, it's the, the hang time, the distance. Uh, these guys got big time legs. And, and I think when there's a lot of plus 50 punts, which I see, think you're seeing around the league too, the offense is stalling around the 50. I think it's probably like that every, I don't know what the stats are, uh, but those are very hard to, uh, to return a touchdown. In fact, one of the touchdowns I think Chicago had, he caught the ball at the two yard line, went 98 yards. So um, I think those are all factors that uh, play play into that uh, that statistic. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Scott. Dan Lobby, go ahead. Hey, Mike. Um, I, I wanted to ask you about Chris on, on that final drive. Did you have an idea of kind of where you needed to get to, to maybe attempt a game winning field goal or where you might have been comfortable? I think probably closer to the 30. 
than, than anything. Um, you know, it wasn't really discussed. I think we were trying to go down. I think Coach Stefanski's talked about wanting to go down and not put it in his hands, you know, around his foot, um, but to go down and score a touchdown to win the game there. And I think that was his focus, and, and I completely understand that, um, given that he's a young player that already missed a PAT. But, you know, he was confident. I'll give uh, Chris McGar a lot of credit. He was confident. His attitude was right. Um, you know, he, he had the right mentality to go kick that game winner. And I wish we would have had that chance because I think he would have made it. And, and I don't think we've talked to you since you guys kind of officially made that switch at punter. Um, obviously, Dustin was here kicking while Jamie was on the list, but then Jamie got waived. You know, you've worked with Jamie a lot. How, how tough was it? You know, I know you got to go with the better guy, but how tough was it to kind of see him go after kind of all the work you would put in with him? Yeah, I think any time uh, in, you're in that situation with a young man, you've been around for nearly three years, it's, it's hard. I, I like Jamie as a person. He's a fine young man. He's worked extremely hard. I still think he has an opportunity to punt in this league. I think he's very talented. We felt like we needed the best option to help us make the playoffs going down the stretch. We needed more consistency from that position, and hopefully we'll get that here in the last couple of games and, and help us get into the playoffs. But that was the reason behind it, and, uh, you know, I've – no ill will towards Jamie. He gave us everything he had. Like I said, he became a really good holder. I've said that before. Um, he's got a big time leg. He's talented, and I'm sure he'll punt again in this league. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Nate Ulrich is next. Hey, Mike. Uh, the last time you guys were in Pittsburgh was obviously, you know, you as uh, acting head coach, the wild card win. Um, what do you remember most about how? strange the atmosphere was at, at Heinz Field though that day given the pandemic and then what kind of atmosphere are you expecting with with Big Ben and all signs are pointed <laughs> this is the last game in there Monday night. I know Pittsburgh and Cleveland have been rivals forever but their fans are a lot of like they're extremely passionate like our fans you know it's been their quarterback I think he's been there for 18 years he's won a lot of games for them um, they're passionate about him and, and their Steelers so I'm sure the atmosphere because of the crowd noise is going to be much different than we had last year. Um, you know, I'm excited about going back there and, you know, hopefully we'll know by that point if we control our own destiny and hopefully we will. Uh, but, you know, we got to do, you know, one day at a time, we got to have a great practice today. We've had good meetings this morning. We'll have a great practice today and walk through and continue to improve and get better and get our guys that don't have a ton of reps because we still have guys you know, moving around because of the, virus or bringing guys off the street or practice squad we got to continue working on getting guys ready to play this game so it's uh obviously it's pittsburgh cleveland it's always a big game no matter the records but hopefully there's a little bit more something to it and, and i know it will be because of the uh, situation with their quarterback thank you thank you nate we'll take one more question scout patrick hey mike you mentioned um hoping to control your destiny how tough is that to get to this point in the season um it feel like you probably should have won at least the last couple of games but not controlling your own destiny? Well, I think, you know, you're a competitive guy. Like, our, you know, we got competitive coaches, competitive players. We always want to be able to be in control, like all of us. I mean, we're human. We want to be in control of that situation. Um, but what we can control is to prepare. What we can control is to go out and win this game on Monday night. And that's going to be our singular focus. Like Coach, you know, Coach Stefanski says all the time, we'll want to know this week. And, you know, that's all we can control. No matter what happens, you know, we got to go win this game. That's our job and to finish strong here in the last two games of the season and finish nine and eight and see where, you know, where the rest of it takes us. And I wanted to follow up on what Dan asked you about Jamie. Why do you think he wasn't able to kind of build off what seemed like a real strong rookie season? You know, I've said it before, his rookie year, he punted a ton. I mean, we didn't, we didn't move the ball as well. We punted a lot. He got into a certain rhythm. And when you play on a better team or a better offensive team, like, uh, you know, last year, we, you know, and this year we've had a lot of, uh, games where we only punted two or three times it's hard for a young punter to get into rhythm that's no excuse he still needs to be more consistent and that was kind of our focus this year based off of last year when he wasn't as consistent and um you know he just was up and down and and do I think he's still a good punter absolutely we just knew we needed a little bit more from that position going down the stretch